So it's introduced with a very funny joke they don't quite understand, but I'm sure it's okay. I'm Eric from Lab Co-op. I'm an Informaticus. Bitcoin is not really a new technology, but we're going to abuse it and see what new things we can make it do. Before we get to the abuse, we have to learn how the basics work, though. So, Have any of you ever bought drugs on the internet? <laughs> no one will raise their hands, and no one of you has. If you had, you'd, it probably worked something like this. So, you and your favorite drug dealer got together and chose a mediator who would resolve any problems if there was a dispute and you each generated a public key and created a special wallet with three public keys. And this Bitcoin wallet is special because you can only get the money out of it if you have signatures from two of the three key pairs. So this works great because you don't have any incentive to cheat, you can't get the money back by yourself, so you, if the transaction goes well, you might as well sign off and let the dealer get his money. And if there's a problem, the mediator can step in and provide the second signature for either you or the dealer to get that harder to drug money. <laughs> but that is all an illusion, and it's time to take the red pill. <laughs> My colleagues are laughing at everyone else's so. What's really going on is that the Bitcoin world doesn't have wallets, it just has transactions. And some of those transactions have unspent outputs. And on this picture, there is, those are UTXOs, unspent transaction outputs. And each unspent transaction output is an authentication problem. We have to figure out who's authorized to spend it. And we solve that authentication problem by attaching each unspent output to a script. And when you want to go spend that money, we prepend the script of your new transaction to the script from the old transaction and run it. And if there is anything non-zero left over at the end, then you're authorized to spend that money. So in the case of our drug deal, this is what the script on the first transaction would look like it confusingly reads from the bottom up. So the very first thing that happens is we do, we are going to check some signatures, then we say that there are three signatures, and then we give the three public keys. Then we say, okay, we need two out of those three signatures to actually redeem. And then there is two parameters missing, and those will be provided when the script from the next transaction is prepended to this one. So that's what's actually going on when you are buying your drugs on the internet. Okay, this is not actually very socially useful. We would like to do something that makes us feel a little bit warm and fuzzy inside with Bitcoin. Well, what we could do is we could make a transparent insurance company that has to keep its money in a public account. And how could we do this? Well, we need a third party. Let's call it the Oracle. And this Oracle is going to bring in the prices of different financial instruments into the Bitcoin network. So what you do is you say, dear Oracle, Whenever the price of m is less than n, I would like to have your signature. And the Oracle provides signatures when you ask. This is a really cool setup because the Oracle doesn't know which signatures you're actually going to attach to transactions. So you can just ask for signatures all the time to test the Oracle and make sure it's trustworthy. So you only have to trust the Oracle a little bit. You don't have to trust it very much. <laughs> so. With this setup, we can now refer to information outside of the Bitcoin universe when we're setting up our transactions. And you can use a script like this. The hash is there to make sure that you have to write a transaction to claim your insurance money that the Oracle actually approved. 
and then you throw that away so it doesn't interfere with the multi-signature checking. And then just push in public keys and saying how many keys there are exactly like you saw before. So this sounds really cool. I want to go out and try this. What would happen if I tried this? So I would get my friends together, I would convince one of them to start running an Oracle server, and then I would start an insurance company needing lots of startup money, and we would sign lots of very complicated transactions, and we would publish them to the Bitcoin network to get authenticated, and nothing would happen. <sighs> what went wrong? So there's, in the Bitcoin specification, there is this whole wonderful scripting language that you can use, and it allows you to do anything except loop. You can check conditions, you can set things to happen in the future, you can do all sorts of things. But it turned out to be really buggy and full of security holes, and so actually almost the entire language is disabled, and these are the only five things you can do with it. And all of these five things are some variation on paying money to someone else or the escrow payment that we saw with the drug dealer. And then there is a couple of transactions in here for getting the two systems to work with each other. And all in all, that's the only five allowed transactions. And so the miners who are in charge of validating transactions in the Bitcoin network, if they see any transaction that you made up using the Bitcoin script, they'll just ignore it. So if you want, so the Bitcoin protocol has a lot of opportunity for the future, a lot of things you can do with it. The Bitcoin community is not quite there yet. We need to convince miners <coughs> to get up their game. There's only one miner right now that will actually process non-standard transactions for you. So there is hope on the Bitcoin front. There's also hope for another technology, Ethereum which is not super stable yet, it's not super widely used, but it is all about scripting. Its primary job is to be a scriptable currency more than a currency. So there's another avenue for hope if you want to be able to program your money and have it do things for you. And I'm pretty sure I'm out of time by now, so I'm just gonna leave you with a lovely quote. <laughs> Thank you for your attention. <laughs> Chain the sides, but not using the Bitcoin technology? Or what are some uses for anything with blockchain? Or what exactly do you mean by that? Both. Both. Okay. So there is many, many successors to Bitcoin that people are trying to create to solve various problems. Uh, Wikipedia said it was 50 something. And so there's all manner of currencies that you can use if you can find anyone else who also trades them. And that's already a problem at the size of Bitcoin is that you have to find other people who accept it. And so uh, smaller currencies have practically are kind of limited in that way. Um, there's a big consortium of banks that wants to be able to have easy bank-to-bank -bank transactions with a standard way of keeping records between all of them. They're thinking of using blockchain for that. You can use blockchain to sign legal documents. And apparently you can also use blockchain to keep your holocratic organization from spiraling out of control. But I don't know too much about that one. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs>